Welcome to Game of Flurns. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nays. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. I'm sitting on a throne right now because we got one for a photo shoot uh, that didn't wind up happening. So we now have a throne in our studio. So that's really fun. <laughs> that happens every now and then. Sometimes you plan on one thing and something else turns up and you wind up going in a different direction with things. Totally just a cost of doing business. We had a really cool episode today. We were editing one of our contest winners from last week's image, and we're gonna be adding graffiti onto this image. We're gonna be talking about a lot of things, like working with lightness, colors, highlights, shadows, and even with contrast, making sure that the graffiti that we had from a completely different picture does in fact blend into this picture. We got a lot of cool stuff to do. Let's get into it. All right, so here's our image. This is by Vince Griff, and uh, it's a really cool image of a dude skateboarding and uh, Vince, you want a Flurn Pro because we're editing this on Flurn.com. And uh, this is a picture of graffiti that I took in Logan Square here in Chicago uh, last weekend. Really, really cool wall in Logan Square. If you guys live in Chicago, uh, go check it out. It's right off uh, beside New Wave Coffee. There's like, I don't know, a hundred feet of like graffiti artists are doing this wall. So first thing I'm gonna do, I gotta get this image here into, um, into this image by Vince. So I'm gonna use the move tool and I'll hold the shift key and click and drag from one image over to the other one. And there we go, we can see, this was taken with my iPhone. They're getting so good nowadays. It's like eight megapixels, which is insane. Now I'm gonna create a copy of this. I'm gonna hit command J. Sometimes when I'm, I know I'm about to do like a lot of transforming and things like that. I just wanna make sure that I have a copy just in case I decide I wanna undo that in the future, but I don't wanna use the undo key. I'll just go back to the original one. So anytime I'm about to do something like that, I'll just create a copy and then you don't have to worry about undo. Okay, let's go ahead and lower our opacity. Now, the thing I wanna do right here, let's just kind of sketch this out before we get started. We have a couple different options. Um, I wanna make it actually like go, you know, on the, on the skate ramp itself, which has a curve in it. You can see it's got the same curve here. You just can't see it as much because it's, you know, um, it's at a different perspective to the camera, a different angle. And it's gonna kind of come up. So we want something that's gonna kind of curve up like this. There we go and that's going to basically make the graffiti. Now, we can choose to either have it just on the ramp or we can choose to have it be on the ramp and as well extend up or we can have like a different part of the graffiti here on the wall. So a couple different options that you can kind of choose from. We're gonna definitely do this guy uh, extending up. I think we'll go with a different set of graffiti here. I think it'll look really cool. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's make this invisible. I'm gonna make our graffiti back visible and I'm gonna hit Command T, which is gonna bring my transform dialog. Now, when you hit Command-T, you're gonna have all these options up here at the top. You've got your um, alignment point. Basically, this is where it'll transform from. Um, you can fit, change your delta, which will change your X and Y, zero of those. You can change your width and your height. You can lock those together, angle, horizontal, and vertical skew. So let's go ahead and lock our width and our height, and then I can click on either the width and height and just click and drag down, just like that and it's going to make sure that it, that you don't have to hold down shift or anything because that's locking your width and your height. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. You don't have to make it fit necessarily uh, because this is just, after all, it's just a section of graffiti wall. It's not exactly, you know, it's not exactly proportionate anyway. So I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the sky. We don't need the sky in this image. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna grab the lasso tool here. We'll go to our polygonal lasso tool, click up there right down here to the top of the wall, to this other top of the wall up here, and then we'll connect with our original starting point, and then I'm gonna hit the delete key. Now I'm on the layer with the graffiti on it, so notice I'm not trying to delete anything in my background. There we go. You could use a layer mask here. I just know 100% that I didn't want that. Not only that, now when I hit Command T, I'm transforming um, this actual wall, so I don't have to worry about uh, transforming the sky with it. Okay. So what we don't want to do now is basically get this into shape and we can do that using the perspective. So we can hit Command T, you can right click on here and go down to perspective. So now I'm editing in perspective and basically if I click any of these corners here, they're going to kind of warp things into perspective. So let's try to move this over here. There we go. I'm going to click this corner and just drag that right down something like that. And this can take a little while, so you know, be patient with it. Now you can kind of choose like how much perspective you actually want with this. Um, you don't have to make it perfect, of course. Like, you know, it can, it can be a little bit different. 
Now I'm having some trouble with this perspective. I don't, I don't like that I can't like edit everything so freely. A lot of people really like perspective. I tend to do it the different way. So why don't I just show you the way that I use? Um, but if you do like perspective, this is going to lock you into perspective. But I'm unable, I'm unable to change it in some of the ways that I, uh, that I like to. So I'm going to hit Escape. And instead of doing the perspective, we're going to hit Command T. Instead of going right click and hit perspective, just hold down the control or the command key. And now you can grab each one of these corners and just put it wherever you want. So this is a little bit easier, I think. So we're going to grab this corner. I'm going to put it in that corner down there. Just holding down the control key. And we're going to put this in that corner. And this one is going to go in that corner. And then this one's just going to go right down there as well. All right, let's pull this out a little bit. So you can see that was just like a little bit easier, just having a little bit more control there. Okay, now that's really nice. Now, without hitting enter, there is something that I want to do. Let's make this, um, I can't make it invisible. What? A lot of the time you can make things invisible, even during a transformation, but apparently right now I can't. But I don't want to hit enter yet. And the reason why is we need another transform to happen. We need something that's going to actually like allow it to um, look like it's kind of like bending in. But I don't want that to happen um, after I hit enter because I want it to be from the original shape. So now I'm going to hit this key right up here. This is the warp. And I'm going to go over here where we can choose our warp. And we can choose to arc on an upper or arc on lower. We can arch this. Let's try arc lower. There we go. Now if it's coming on the downside, maybe we'll want to flip this. So this is going to be to the left and the right. Now, so this is top and the bottom. This is going to be left and right. And this is going to arc in this way. Okay, now we don't want it to arc in this way. Remember, we wanted to do this one. So let's change it back to arc upper. There we go. And now it's pulling out that way. So you can see you can change it so it arcs upper side, or if you hit this switch, it's going to arc on this other side. And this is going to do it in perspective, which is very cool. Now our bend, you can increase that number, and you're going to see it's going to continue to arc. But you can decrease this number all the way to a negative. There we go. And what we're going to get is something that's actually going to wind up conforming to the shape of our ramp, which is very, very cool. All right, and when we're done, you can change your vertical and horizontal shear if you want to do that as well. Let's just do that just a little bit. And then we're gonna hit this checkbox right up there. Very cool. So we've got something that's kind of like fitting the shape of our ramp. Now, if it doesn't fit perfectly, let's lower the opacity. You could layer mask it, you can change it. Let's just, I'm gonna hit Command T real quick. You're gonna right click and now you can hit warp and you can just kind of warp it into place. But I would recommend using some of your transform tools before you use warp. They're just a little bit more accurate. There we go. Warp that into place. Now we're going to hit that checkbox. OK, so we've got our graffiti. And there it is. Now you can see at 100% opacity, that doesn't look like it fits in at all, right? And there are a couple of reasons why. Um, first of all, you have to. this is a composite. So you have to think about things like your saturation, your contrast, and your different hues. So we have, this part of the sky is relatively saturated. I mean, that's a, that's a nice blue. Let's uh, just click right here on our color and see that's, yeah, that's really saturated. Now, this down here is not as saturated. Not only that, but from the lightest point all the way to the darkest point, like look how similar those are. We'll just paint them right next to each other. They're relatively similar. So we don't have a lot of contrast. Basically, you need to mimic that in the graffiti. So let's bring that graffiti back up. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and we're gonna go up to our you could use brightness slash contrast, but well, let's just do that. Why not? I've never, <laughs> I haven't used it in a long time, so why not? It might suck. Usually I would just use curves. Now, I want this only to be visible where my layer one is visible. So I'm gonna right click here and say, create a clipping mask. And that's gonna only affect this layer with the graffiti on it. Let's double click here. And remember, we wanna say we wanna have less contrast, right? So less contrast. And then we wanna bring up our brightness a little bit. All right and a little bit less contrast. Yeah, you know what? I'm just not really digging this. I, I don't think it's working the way that I want to. But we'll keep it on there and I'll show you what I would do with curves. So let's just look at this before and the after to kind of see like, is it fitting in? Is it not fitting in? All right, let's grab our curves adjustment layer. And then Option Command G is the same thing as creating a clipping mask. So less contrast would mean you would bring your darks a little bit uh, darker. Sorry, your lights darker and your darks a little bit lighter. There we go. And you can see you can kind of work with your contrast there a little bit. You'll have, just have a little more control. You can even change your black levels and bring your whites right up to there. There we go. 
Cool. I think that's looking a little bit better. So we're just working with our contrast. And we knew to do that, again, because the original layer, um, yeah, this one I just don't really like. Let's lower that opacity. The original ramp underneath this just wasn't that contrasty. So we knew we had to reduce the contrast in order to make it fit in a little bit better. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now, we don't have any of the information for the highlights and the shadows. So let's shift click all those, and I'm going to hit Command G to group those. We can delete this now, and that's just our sketch. We can delete that as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the highlights and the shadows from my original ramp. This is really cool. So in a new layer, let's go to Select, and I'm going to go down to Color Range. And we're just going to select the color range of that highlights on the ramp. Let's just lower our opacity there. Cool. Now, we're working with an image that doesn't have a whole lot of information because it's already been compressed and put on the internet. So you can see it's a little bit artifacty. Yours won't look like that. Yours will look a little bit better. All right, let's bring it down just a little bit more even. Very nice. Hit OK. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab it uh, on my layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool, hold Alt or Option. I'm going to sample this color here. OK. And then with my graffiti back visible, I'm going to hit Command H. We're going to hide the extras here. So I've sampled the color of the light part of the graffiti. I've selected out the highlight in the underlying ramp. And now I've sampled the color of the graffiti. So with this layer, I'm going to paint now over top of my ramp. There we go. And it's going to bring that highlight color back over top of the ramp, which is really cool. It even brings your texture. If I want to clip this to have it only be visible this ramp, I just click and drag this down into my group, right click and go to create clipping mask and it'll clip right down there. So we've got our highlights in there and our texture. We're just going to lower the opacity a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. And we're going to do the same thing with our shadows. You could even change this to something like a soft light layer if you wanted, and then you'd bring your opacity back up. I think that looks better as a soft light layer rather than just 100% visible. Now we're going to do the same thing. Let's make that invisible. On a new layer again, let's go to select down here to color range. And now we're going to select out the shadows. OK. And we'll hit OK. That looks pretty good. Let's grab a nice dark color here in the shadows. And then on this layer, what we're going to do, let's make that back visible again. We're just going to paint this dark color here on the shadows. There we go. Let's open this up. And we'll click and drag that. Now we can change this again to something like soft light. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. So we're adding back these, uh, these bit of textures to our ramp. So instead of just looking like totally plain and you know just like one dimensional, it's got this texture back in there. All right, we're just going to add another layer of grunge right here on the bottom. It's like a little bit darker. So select down to color range. Let's get this even darker color, bring our fuzziness up a little bit. OK, and a nice dark color we're going to paint on there. Oops, I painted directly on my background layer. Never do that. You want to paint on this layer above there. All right. And now we're going to change this from normal down to like, you could either use soft light, overlay, multiply, all those would work. There we go. So that's just kind of filling in that, that hole there where it was looking a little bit weird. All right. And there we go. We're looking pretty good as far as our graffiti on our, um, on our thing is concerned. Now, it's a little bit too well defined. You can see our original image has got a little bit of like blur and stuff like that. The graffiti itself is like too well defined, right? It, it looks like too clean and too good. So what you're going to want to do is go back to your graffiti layer and just give it a little bit of a blur. Go to Filter, down here to Blur, and over to Gaussian Blur. And just a very little blur is just going to make it like set in the photo a little bit more because the original image just what didn't have that high resolution. So you can see. It might be hard to see this on the internet, you know, on, on just a video, especially on YouTube. If, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, uh, turn your quality all the way up. But here's the preview. You can see there's the before and the after. Just a little bit of blur, but that's just going to really help it uh, kind of settle in and, and make everything look quite a bit better. All right. That looks great. Now we've got just a bit more we're going to do, and, uh, and then we're going to be done. And we're just going to leave the side um, normal because it, it'd be the same techniques. So you wouldn't be learning anything. Let's put a layer mask on this entire group. And now, with our lasso tool, I want to just make sure that we have enough. There we go. That we're going to actually like include this little uh, the metal pipe on the, on the top there. Because that would not, obviously, be have graffiti on it. All right, so on our layer mask, let's just fill that with black. And there we go. Let's zoom in and 
here I'm just going to clean this up with a, with a small brush. All right. So you could do this with a lot of things. If you wanted to add tattoo to skin, if you wanted to do, you know, like any kind of like pattern or technique you wanted to add to something else, this would be a really great way to do it. Now, the only last thing that I would suggest doing is let's grab a hue saturation adjustment layer and just see like, does it look better with the saturation up or down? And I think up just a little bit kind of like helps it to pop out just a little bit more. There we go. Sometimes if your colors aren't right, I noticed a lot of time it's actually your saturation that, that needs a little bit of work. And there we go. We've got a skate ramp and it looks like, um, it looks great. Let's do, well, one more thing. You know what? Why not? Because I, I just want to. Let's grab a, a, a brush tool. We'll just grab a light color here and then just paint a little bit more light on the top. There we go. And then we'll change that from normal down here to soft light. All right. Because I thought it could be a little bit lighter up there. Okay, and then, well, you know what? There's one more thing that I want to do. So we have this, um, this uh, light flare. This actually looks like it was done in Photoshop um, or at least added to in Photoshop. Let's bring that back over top of our texture. We can do that. It's really not that hard. Okay, just create a new layer on top of everything. I'll go to Select, down to Color Range, and then I'm just going to click this color of the, of the flare right there. And we're going to hit OK. And on this new layer, we're going to grab this nice color there, and I'm just going to paint. There we go. So on this new layer, we've got basically the same thing here. We're going to change this from normal down to screen. There we go. And then I'm going to hit Command T and just rotate it around. All right. So we're now what we've got is that flare continues around. We'll just put a layer mask on there and paint that black right over top of, because we carried a little bit of extra with us. There we go. And we've got our flare right back over top of our texture. So here's our original image and the after. Pretty cool stuff, guys. And this didn't take too long. If you wanted to spend more time, you could add more texture and more grunge and things like that on top of it. But very, very cool. You can do this again with tattoos. You could, if you want to put a texture on a person's face, just warp it into place and then copy the highlights and the shadows from the underlying texture, put it back over top of the texture you worked, and it's going to look real. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I want to see this. What do you guys can do? What are you guys can do with this technique? That doesn't make any sense. But if you understood what I was saying, please leave your image in a comment down below. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. You want to know how I got so good at Photoshop? I just I sit in a throne while I Photoshop and it really makes me better. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.